everybody. I have now gotten myself back out here to the camper, and I've got the water heater sitting here, and here's some parts that were removed. If you look down there, you see the water inlet. There was just a dump right there with a little vent, and that went to the tank. And then this miserable thing, that was for the water, and that was up underneath, up underneath the body there. And they're notorious of breaking. There's the pieces for that. And then this old vent, not in very good condition. It's really bowed out bad. Um, pretty bad. It had some leaks. You can see the, the dirt piling in there where the water was leaking in. Now, we have replaced those items with this. And I put one piece of uh, aluminum trim right here over the top of this right here. There was a small hole where that was removed from. I have blocked in around it. And we are currently running the PEX lines all the way back. We have the shower unit in. We have the new stove vent in. And now we're going to start working on windows. So the windows have been completely cleaned. And we're going to put a nice big bead around these of the Dynaflex. Now what I do is I'll put a decent bead around these, just this side of these screws. And then up here, the original screw holes, I will put it on the outside. There's still a little bit of that residue left, but it'll go on there hard enough and deep enough to where it'll seal up and squish out, and then we'll clean around it just like I did that right there. So that's the main part about sealing these things up. Now, let me get that window prepped up with the Dynaflex, and I'll show you the steps on it. All right, now we've got a nice big sloppy bunch of that Dynaflex on there. We're going to be using these screws right here, inch and a half with the rubber seal washer. And there's a nice big sloppy mess of that stuff up there. So we're going to go ahead and grab the window and set it up right and get it in place. And then just a matter of slowly working your screws around centering it up and slowly working your screws around by placing one here 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 and then because you don't want to try to torque one side so you want to go slow about it and I actually choose to use this very old black and decker because I love its clutch seems to never fail on me and I'll find the original hole in here and just to where it touches so you just take it and just see where it touches. That's it. You don't want to go more than that. And then I'll run one in over here. Just touch and I got the clutch set pretty low. You don't want to overdo it. Like that. And then you'll kind of work yourself around to all the other locations. Making sure you get it in there. Like so. When you're done, you're going to clean off all the excess you have and do like I do. I just find something else I'm about to attach and just wipe it in that area and then get moving to the next project. So, as you can see, it's not too hard to knock out. It's pretty easy. It cleans up well. You get your new windows or your windows all back in. That'll be next. Hot water heater. Now, the hot water heater is going to get a a full foaming job and guys I've seen people do these but what they fail to do is they fail to wrap fiberglass around where it shoots the fire in so you want to stuff fiberglass in around that pipe down there at the bottom and I've already got some around the top pipe because there's a tube going through this tank that the flame goes through and just comes back out and that's how you heat your water so you want to make sure that down here you got about two inches of space uh, fiberglass wrapped around that lower tube as you can see where that goes in we still got to clean this up of all the wasp debris that's in it so, there you go is it looking good yet not too bad we're on the way um i've got a new part to add to this camper and as you've seen we started putting the windows in still have some more cleanup to do but uh we're working on some different stuff here now i've got a battery compartment door and this to go in now this is a twist lock right here 
and it's a waterproof seal twist lock. Now this is just a short cord here, 30 amp, um, as basically showing you what I'm working with, but we're gonna have a longer one than that. I've got a 30 footer instead of this. This is just for my testing and things. But we're making a hole here because we're gonna have a bigger panel going here behind the stove to put some batteries in. And if you look in the previous video, that'll tell you why. There is a 10 gauge that used to go to a box that had the big heavy cord, which is over here. And we don't like that too much because these don't, people will cut them, they will tear your boxes open to steal the copper cords out of here. So it's a lot smarter in my case to just use, I mean, for this, just for this, to use a 12 gauge version that's cheap, about 30 bucks, instead of using an expensive $100 cord and nobody really wants it because it's just a basic cord. So we have this here and we're drilling through and we're going to install it and we're going to just shorten this wire up to where it's going to work to go in here. So I'll finish this. We get that through there. The next step is to take this 10 gauge that's back here and wire it into these. Now, you can look below the video, I'll put a link to these real nice twist locks. And the way that they work, they're really simple. You have your ground, which is marked little slashy lines. You have your white line, then you have your uh, hot line that's over here. And it's just that simple. So they'll go in, there's just four screws, cover snaps on them, and they mount on the side of your RV. So we'll have it basically just like that. It's not even very high profile, you know, comparing to the shower. But there it is. It'll pop open. It keeps moisture out. It works perfect. And you can use a, you can even use a 14 gauge adapter that's made for these if you're just running a camper like this because you only need 15 amps. That's it. All right, now you can see that it's in, secured, and wired. Let me see the wires up in there. There's the wiring going to it. And I've taped them up. Don't want them to get hit by anything. There it is, very simple. Just grab this. And you see I've got the little 15 amp adapter on it. Plug it in. It shows you the top arrow there. Give it a little twist and tighten it on there. It also is very helpful so that it don't pop out easy on you. And this, like I said, this is just a short one. I do have a longer one. Now, the next thing, as you can see, I've drawn a line. We have this door here, and I'm going to put this door in. Now, one of the things I did over here is I had to go find where I was. It's going to be very close to this edge here. There'll be some studs removed, but this is a heavy gauge, so it's structural. And we'll also be boxing in in the back back there and adding more uh, plywood and other things to it to bring up the strength again. Because once I cut this, I'll be cutting that one and this one right here. There's two studs that are in here. We're going to cut them, but I'm also going to insert studs back in and frame it back. So we're going to get that. The first thing to do is to find out, like I said, where that stud's at. We're going to cut the sheet metal first, remove the insulation, and then find out what we can kind of work around and get it installed. So let's get the sheet metal off here. And don't that look good? Nice and easy way to power that. All right, now let's get down to the brass tacks here on it. Um, cutting this away, you're going to find, I want to make sure everybody knows this, underneath where the over layer is, there's always going to be some staples. That's how they install it. There'll be staples. And then this piece, just like siding on your house, is pulled up and it, and it clips in. You see that? That's how it's worked out. Now, I get in here and I see the back of my plywood, my paneling right here. And then I do have one of them that is a load carrying. But what we're going to do is we're going to remove this and install one right here. So I have plenty pieces here, as you can see down here, of one by twos. And that's basically, now this is a little bit more girth than a one by two, but we're going to be fine. We're going to put that in here, pop it with a few staples. 
as we've trimmed and cut all of this out. Now, the bad is, is that it puts me, you see where that screw hole come through right there? It puts me just barely into that corner. It's right there. But with my flange depth, I specifically picked this one. It won't hit that. This will go all the way in and touch, but it won't, you know, I don't have to do any changes on that. So it'll be when you open the door, you'll see that little offset going into that area. But I had to do it this way because there's a frame here under the window I did not want to cut that runs right down through here. You see that? Didn't want to drill and cut that one. It's too close to a major opening. Now, making a major opening, and I will frame this in. So we're going to work on replacing these pieces and getting it all set up so I can have that door put in and install my battery area for my extra SLA sealed lead acid batteries. So my solar has a place to go. All right, now we've got our cut and our opening. A little bit of feathered uh, paneling back in there. And you can see where the glue on that other paneling was. Um, we've, we're going to reach inside this back corner inside where the heater goes since it's out. And I'm going to put a little piece and run it off with the stapler. So I'm just using that little Harbor Freight stapler. Look at the mess. So here we go. We're going to try this out and see if it fits. And it looks like we have a beautiful fit. We'll give that here a shot. And there you go. Nice big opening to the back of the stove when it's put back in. But we will have enough room for a battery that is six inches wide. So it's only six inches wide, and I've got roughly nine inches of clearance. We're going to go ahead and get this framed in. And here, I'm going to have a panel put over the top of my water lines right here. And we're going to go ahead and... Uh, lay some insulation down on top of this right here some of that uh, uh, half inch foam because it gives me plenty of room and we're going to lay that down and then put some two by three framing in to get to the height of the rim here and put a piece of plywood down and there we go now we have a battery compartment that'll handle three or four looks like it actually handle four 35 amp hour batteries that's the goal now in the back we'll have another three 35 amp hour batteries and a pretty good total of about 250 to 275 amp hours and i have another space over there on the other side where i can put two more next stage is to run the four gauge wiring to all of these run it to one spot and put my 2000 watt true sine wave in and this thing will be ready to fly looking good so far though don't you think all right guys y'all look for more videos on it we're going to start with the heater and the water heater next Thank you.